Welcome back to Tim and Sid. Tim McAuliffe is off. He's back in a couple of weeks. Arash Madani has been kind enough to join me today. Uh, the Bill Peters story with Calgary continues after a story surfaced that he uttered racial remarks to a former player in the American Hockey League back in the 09-10 season. Uh, right now, as we speak, the Calgary Flames are in Buffalo getting ready for a hockey game at Key Bank Center tomorrow night. But the story has definitely taken a different turn. Bill Peters did not run practice today. There is an investigation ongoing, courtesy of Brad Treliving. Eric Francis of Sportsnet has been kind enough to join us live from Key Bank Center in Buffalo. E, it's great to see you. Um, what, what's your general feeling as we sit here a little after 5.30 p.m. Eastern? Where, where does this go from here? You, you know, it's it's my sense that this is just basically uh, we're just waiting for the axe to fall. I, I I see no scenario under which you know this uh, could turn out to be a situation where Bill Peters is back behind the bench tomorrow for their game, um, and the team moves along with 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 Bill Peters as their coach. Now, it's scary uh, that uh, this all started with a tweet. However, the team has clearly you know tried corroborating this story, and 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 their investigation is such that I think that what's waiting right now. We're just waiting for the legalese to kind of get tied up. I, we haven't heard Bill Peters come out and deny anything. I don't think the team would allow him to come out and say anything. I think everything's been kept behind closed doors, which is probably the way it should be. But I just think that at the end of the day, I don't think the league, the team, uh, I don't think that they could continue on with Bill Peters as the coach in any way. And if Bill Peters says something here, I think he's probably been lawyered up, Eric, that the lawyers are telling yeah. him. I mean, Bill Peters can pick up the phone and call any reporter he wants. But he's probably mm -hmm. trying to protect himself right now as much as possible that if they are going to dismiss him, that he gets paid what's left of his contract. I 100% agree. I think that's, you know, it's his lawyers. I think it's the Flames lawyers. I think the NHL's lawyers in, are in on this. I think everybody's just collaborating to try and take what is clearly not a good situation for the league, the team, uh, Bill Peters, anybody involved, Akeem Alou. But they're just trying to make the best of it moving forward. Let's go work together to try and have a collaborative effort and see if we can minimize the damage. I mean, the damage is massive. This is the biggest story in a little while. Well, in a while, uh, certainly around the Calgary Flames and one of the bigger ones around the league because there are repercussions that we're going to be talking about for quite a long time. Personally, my phone has been lighting up today with stories from former players of Bill Peters, uh, all sorts of people around the league who have their two cents to throw in on Bill Peters' coaching style, Bill Peters the man, and, and it seems like piling on, but you guys have seen it with Mike Babcock over the last 24 hours in the Toronto news cycle, and now we're seeing it with Bill Peters in Calgary. This story still has a lot of legs, and I think the goal is to minimize the damage moving forward. Okay, That's, I, I understand all that. Bill Peters isn't the only person who has done something wrong in professional sports at some point in their life. And I think this is really important now to, to understand that, yes, the methods he has used, not, not in the Akeem Alou situation, but the Mikhail Jordans and, and the rest are going to come out, and people didn't like him, and people don't like him. Fine. My question, Eric, is, as you look forward, as we look forward, and, and forget hockey for a moment, any sport or any walk of life, at, at, at what point is there, a, is there a statute of limitations? How far back are people going to go and bring something up? And, and is this a precedent-setting move? If you have done something terrible or alleged to have done something repugnant, are you out the door? In whatever line of work you are in today, in whatever profession you are today, I think it's uh, obviously this is the. It's slip. a case by case this, thing. It's a case by case, and in this case, yeah. Eric, if I may, I think the fact that it was corroborated so quickly, I think the fact that within yeah. 12 hours you had two former teammates, I'm with you. Uh, one of the one of whom went up to Bill Peters and said, "You can't do that." I think I think that's what separates this situation. I can't speak for anything else we're going to see in the next 24, 48, 72 hours. I have no idea what is to come. But in this situation, I think this was cut and dry. I think this was simple. And the second the young man's claims were corroborated, I, I think I sh I, they should have fired him on the spot. Honestly, Eric, they should have fired him on the spot. Well, I agree with you. If those words were uttered, then there's only way, one way for this to end. And, and I think that's what we had alluded to earlier. I think it's going to end the exact same way you think. And I just think it's a lawyer's thing at this point in time. But when people are talking about this story today in their office or at home, or they're watching it on TV, listening on the radio, 
you can't listen to it and not think about your own life. Because as you alluded to, this is a situation where you might have done something two weeks ago, two years ago, two decades ago. You might have been joking around. You might not have, you may have been serious. Whatever you may have done, something in your life could now come back to haunt you. And that is the bigger story in all this. And we're seeing this more with social media. People are so quick to throw stones at people in their glass houses. Well, just pause and take us a second to think about the repercussions of an allegation. I'm not suggesting this wasn't the right thing for Akeem Dalalu to do. The timing's very interesting. Why did he feel like the door was open to do this now? Is it because people are throwing stones at Mike Babcock and he felt it was time to pile on? It was something he needed to get off his chest for years? So many stories, and I'm not blaming the victim here at all. All I'm saying is this opens a can of worms that, like I said earlier, we're going to hear hearing about for a long, long time. Eric, my, my question is that, I mean, we all have a boss. I mean, my boss is sitting to my left. Hi, Sid. I am, I'm not a rash's boss. No. <laughs> um, Brad Living has to get sign off from whom in order to ultimately move forward and dismiss the coach if that's what the Flames are going to do? Well, I think ultimately it's the ownership group, you know, spearheaded by Ken King and, and John Bean, who, you know, these guys have been dealing with this since the moment this happened, midway through last night's hockey game that the Calgary Flames were playing in. And uh, so, yeah, this is a, something that needed to be signed off with. But don't for a second think that the league hasn't been involved in it from the minute this whole story broke as well. They have a big stake in all of this as well. So this is, like I said, there are a lot of cooks in this kitchen right now trying to figure out how best to move forward. Ownership group is the first ones that he would have had to clear this with. But I think that once it was corroborated, and I, want, I think once that investigation started to really dig in, I know for a fact, I, I touched base with Akeem this morning, he spoke to Brad Treliving last night, so this happened very quickly. After that story was corroborated further by Treliving, I think that the, the wheels were set in motion. And I think in Brad Treliving's heart, he knew right away, I, I've got to let go of this guy. As sticky a situation as this is going to be, it's the right thing for the team. It's the right thing for the game. It really is moving forward. I um, uh, Forgive me as I awkwardly transition to a, an on-ice matter, but someone's going to have to coach this team eventually. Uh, <laughs> e, where do they go with that? Who's, who, who's, who do you think is going to be behind? If what ha is about to happen is what we think is about to happen to Bill Peters, and for the record, yeah. it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but if it does happen, who's coaching that team tomorrow night against the Sabres? Well, assistant coach Jeff Ward, you know, oversaw the practice today. And uh, interestingly enough, he was a guy who was a finalist for the Flames coaching job, the head coaching job years ago, well, three years ago, when Glenn Gullitson ultimately got the job. So they had been pursuing Jeff Ward for a while. I'm not sure they had it in the plans that if anything ever happened to Bill Peters, Jeff Ward would be the guy to step in. But in light of how quickly this has happened, in light of the fact they play right here tomorrow in Buffalo, my guess is Jeff Ward's the guy behind the bench. I think the only question would probably be, is it an interim tag that's hanged on him, hung on him, or is it something that they're going to give it to him permanently right away? That's probably the only thing that remains to be seen. It's not to say they won't knock on a couple other doors and kick some tires on another couple guys. But interestingly enough, when they hired Bill Peters, in the summer of 2018, Brad Tree Living did not interview a single soul. He said he had seen enough at the World Championships in 2016 from Bill Peters to realize that that's the guy he wanted, that was the guy he needed to come down. And ironically, he wanted him to come here and be a little bit tougher a coach than Glenn Gullitson was. Not as tough as Bob Hartley was, but somewhere in between Bob Hartley and Glenn Gullitson. Well, now we're seeing the fallout of all that. So the background check was World Championships and how he handled things. His coaching resume has also been pretty good over the years as well, but ultimately it came down to a relationship that they built at the World Championships overseas. He figured he'd seen enough, and he thought that was exactly the type of approach he needed for a bench boss. He went with Bill Peters. So in light of me saying that, he didn't have a whole raft of people who he had spoken to and thought, well, if things don't work out, I can fall back on this guy maybe or that guy. He would basically be starting fresh in terms of looking at new coaches if, in fact, that's something he wants to do. Eric, yes or no, a quick one before we let you go, and we appreciate your time. Based on everything we, we already know, and I feel like we can say that considering witnesses have corroborated, does Bill Peters work as a head coach again in the National Hockey League? No. Okay. No, I, I can't see him working in the National Hockey League in any capacity. I think if he wants to continue his career, my guess is he's going to have to go overseas. 
that's that's about the only chance I could see with him fighting his way back into the league. Hey, I like to think we live in a world where people are forgiving and we can move forward, but that's a cloud hanging over him that uh, I have a hard time believing yeah, that anyone's going to be able to I oversee. believe in bridges that, that go too far, and I, I, I think this is one of those situations. Yeah. Eric, we really appreciate the time. Uh, it's been an interesting day. Thanks, brother. Cheers, guys. Eric Francis of Sportsnet. 